right, going to go through and debunk this video by Pastor Bruce Mejia, where he just totally twists the scriptures and just, he literally believes that the Old Testament saints were believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, you, I mean, to get into this kind of heresy, you have to just deny plain scripture. You know, just totally ridiculous. Let's get, let's get into refuting this. And let me just reiterate that every single saved person, Old Testament, New Testament, they all believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You say, well, how do you know that? Because of the fact that every Old Testament prophet who talked about them resurrecting have to believe that Jesus Christ resurrected too. Why? Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 13, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. Did you hear me? So if there to be no resurrection... Yes, Old Testament saints were resurrected. You know, where does it say they're believing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Totally twisting what the verse is saying, but you know, with, with the new IFB, they do this a lot, so. Resurrection of the dead, then Jesus Christ is not risen. So are you trying to tell me that when Job talked about his resurrection, when Daniel talked about his resurrection, they're like, well, yeah, we'll resurrect, but Jesus won't. <laughs> so they believed in their own resurrection, but when it came- Okay, so where did they mention the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Get chapter and verse? It's funny, he doesn't give a single verse where they are talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's funny. To the Messiah coming, he was just gonna die and just, you know, gonna die he's not gonna live forever he's not gonna come back from the grave this is a ridiculous statement and you look this is why i said all you have to do is common sense look folks if someone believed in their own resurrection in the old testament that means they also believe that the one who's resurrecting them has to be alive too <laughs> common sense folks if there be no resurrection of the dead then christ is not risen now look, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. What that means is that progressively more information was given as you entered into the New Testament. The shadows, the light was shed on the shadows that were foreshadowing the things to come. But here's the thing, the, the actual fulfillment of those shadows has never changed. God is still God. Jesus is still Jesus. He's the eternal son of God. Salvation has always... Uh, a chapter and verse on that. Where does the Bible say eternal son? You know, Jesus is the son of God, but the eternal son is not scriptural at all. You know, it, and Trinitarians, they always have to add to scripture to prove their pagan trinity. You know, whole other issue. In the same, it's always been by faith alone. Nothing has ever changed as far as salvation is concerned. Oh, so it's always been by faith alone. Okay, so what was the point of Jesus dying on the, Jesus dying on the cross then? You know, and also it's always been my faith alone. Okay, so how do you explain? Uh, because they'll say that we, we, they had eternal security in the Old Testament, which you know, go, because if you, if you are saved by faith alone, there's obviously eternal security. Which, amen. Eternal security is a scriptural doctrine. But did they have eternal security back in the Old Testament? Well, let's see about that. Uh, first, uh, first Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 and First Samuel chapter 18 verse 12 both mention King Saul losing the, the spirit of God. Let me show you that. Uh, first Samuel. First, where's it? 1 Samuel chapter is it 16 verse 14 16 verse 14 because they have been there they were eternal, eternally secure in the Old Testament really but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him and this is again repeated in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 12 and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul so they were eternally secure why does the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, depart from Saul? Because today, according to Ephesians 1.13, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But back then, they were not. The Spirit could depart from them. Also, in Psalms chapter 51, verse 11, King David openly says to God, Take not that Holy Spirit from me. So how, how are they eternally secure and saved by faith alone back then? Because the thing about eternal security is that if you're not eternally secure, you're saved by works. Because salvation is having to rely on you having to do something to keep yourself saved. That's why today, in this current dispensation, we have eternal security, because we're not saved by our own righteousness, our own works. But was this the case back in the Old Testament? Well, absolutely not. They could lose the Spirit of God. Uh, was it First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9? Another verse proving this little heretic is wrong. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. 28, where is it? Verse 9. Another verse proving you could lose your salvation in the Old Testament. And thou, Solomon, thy son, 
Know thou, God, and thy, of thy Father, and serve him with a perfect heart, and with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. This is also repeated in Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1 to 2. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, I hope I'm saying that name right, son of Oded, and verse 2, when he came, or so when he went out to meet Asa, and said upon it, or unto him, Hear ye, hear ye me, Asa, and all, and all Judah, and Benjamin, the Lord is with you, and while he be with you, and if ye seek him, he will be found of you, but if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. They were sealed with the Holy Spirit back in the Old Testament. Uh, no, they weren't. They could be forsaken of God. Um, for Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20. I mean, there's so many verses I can go to just prove this heretic wrong. Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 20. 24, verse 20. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehodaniah, Jeho Jehoadiah, I hope I'm saying that right, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, thus say God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. Okay? That simple. And of course, the best verse, to, because that proves there is no eternal security back in the Old Testament, but the best verse proving works in the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 3, I've done this before, shown this verses before, verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, see, a righteous man here doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. A righteous man here, he was doing righteousness, but he commits iniquity, and the righteousness will not be remembered. They are saved by faith alone. Ezekiel chapter 18. Go there. Here's a nail in the coffin of these heretics. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son, and the, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know, And not just in the Old Testament, what about the future of the time of Jacob's trouble? You know, what if you take the mark of the beast? Are you still saved? Revelation 14, 9 through 11 says if any man takes the mark, they're damned. So how do they have eternal security if you can take the mark and lose your salvation? And no, they'll say, well, no true Christian could take the mark. Sure, okay? It says if any man takes it. That's simple. So, and also, if you say, well, no true Christian would take the mark, okay, but what if a Christian does anyway? You know, here's how you nail them on this. They'll say, no true Christian would take the mark. What if someone knows it's the mark and takes it anyway? Are they still saved? Answer that one. So don't believe this non-dispensational heresy that salvation has always been by faith and we're eternally secure in every dispensation. This is not true according to these verses. So don't be deceived. God bless you. May the, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you.